have any definitive answers to these questions, because I don't. Um, but I do have some thoughts about how we can faithfully engage this political process in this season when we seem to be collectively forgetting the words of the psalmist. Uh, do not put your trust in princes and mortals in whom there is no help. That's Psalm 146. We heard it a couple weeks ago, um, and it was uh, felt very resonant to me. Um, but before I do that, um, uh, are there any... No, no, no questions yet. <laughs> I don't want to... I don't, I don't, not, not, that, not, that not, not that I'm dodging questions, I just want to make sure we get through the thing before we, uh, before we open, open the conversation. So, as, as Christians, as, and as people who are um, engaged in this political process, whether we like it or not, and I'll say more about that in a minute, I believe there are three primary tasks before us. Um, and the first task is discernment. Uh, discernment is a crucial discipline of the Christian life. Because um, as Christians, we're called to be realists. Um, and what I mean by that is we're called to recognize that we don't live in a perfect world, that we live in a fallen world, we live in a world that is subject to sin. Um, so the central task of Christian ethics and of, of discernment generally is to weigh goods in conflict when faced, in a when faced with a decision. Recognizing that there is no morally pure choice, that there is, the, 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 you know, this one is, well, obviously, the good, if you choose between goods and evil, if good and evil, then you choose good every single time, right? Unfortunately, that only works in, um, in uh, superhero movies, um, or movies generally. Usually we are weighing goods in conflict. There's good on this side, there's good on this side. So we need to be pay attention to that when we're making decisions as, as Christians. Because um, no, no decision is perfect, no decision is without negative consequences. Um, but discernment allows us to make a judgment based on the information available to us, and more importantly, shaped by a sense of, of God's providence. And what I mean when I talk about providence is that it's that, um, that line in the, from Romans 6, but that line from our funeral liturgy, whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. That everything that happens occurs within God's care. That's something we always need to keep in mind as Christians. Um, and I believe that faithful discernment will lead us to one of four options this November. Number one, choose one of the major party nominees on their merits. Number two, uh, we can choose one of the major party nominees on the basis of the other nominee's faults. Number, number three is choose a third party nominee or a writing candidate. I will never tell you, never, never, never tell you that there is such a thing as wasting your vote. Because if you, are, if you have done the faithful discernment, if you have engaged in the process, if you have truly made the determination that this is the right choice for you, that is the choice that you should make. But I would caution this against this. Most people are, um, many people will say that the lesser of two evils is, to, is still evil, and that's why they make their, uh, make their, um, their third, uh, choice for a third party or a writing candidate or something like that. But um, it's hard to argue with that logic. But remember, that the, one of the fundamental assumptions of the Christian faith is Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. To put it bluntly, we're all evil, to a certain extent. Um, there's no morally pure choice in any situation. So just keep, the, you know, keep just keep that in mind. Um, um, and finally, the, the fourth option is, is to sit out this election. Um, and I'm again, I think all four of these are are perfectly respectable options. Um, uh, but. If we choose to go in this direction, we have to keep in mind that it doesn't free us from the decision-making process. We can't say, oh, it wasn't, wasn't me. I didn't do it. it was, I, I sat out this election. Um, because unless we're ineligible to vote, we are participating even if we stay home on election day. We are making, we are making a statement about what is, uh, about what is happening in the, in the world. Um, in short, while, choose, while not choosing may very well be the principal path in this election season, not choosing is still a choice. Uh, but I would caution, from all of these, with, with all of um, <laughs> we need to be very careful about this. Um, this, of course, was very popular back in 1974 or so. Um, it was on a lot of cars in Massachusetts. Um, uh, I can't get behind this because I'm a Christian, 
And one of the consistent themes in the New Testament is that we are both responsible to and accountable to one another. We function in community. We don't have the option of existing in isolation. There's another important aspect of discernment, and I, I really want to emphasize this. This has been an election of clickbait headlines and sensational stories. Um, and as Christians, one of our responsibility, the primary responsibilities is to decide what is truly worth our attention. What is worth paying attention to? So be cautious about where you get your information. Uh, also take care not to get swept up in, in sensationalism that's driven so much of the coverage of this election. The second task is empathy. Um, and there's been a decided lack of that from everybody this, uh, this year. Um, when we wake up on November 9th, the election will hopefully be over. Um, and we will have to find a way to live peaceably with one another. Um, so it's important for us not to assume that everyone who makes a different decision than we did is stupid or wrongheaded. Um, we all have reasons for discerning the option we have chosen. Um, and so with that in mind, I want to commend to you an exercise in political empathy, which I think is, I just like the phrase. Um, but my friend uh, Scott Gunn, uh, who is the, um, the director of Forward Movement, which does Forward Day by Day, um, which you, you can find all over the place, and, and, uh, but specifically upstairs and beneath the bulletin board and at our, at our tracts department. Um, at the end of July, he posted um, the, the, the following on Facebook. Um, he started with an exercise in political campaign, and they said, please try to list one positive reason why someone might vote for the presidential candidate you do not support. And I invite you to give this a try. Mm -hmm. Write it down. And the point is not to change your mind, it's not to um, make you say, oh, I've seen the error of my ways and clearly this is the person I should vote for. The point is to recognize that we all see the world differently and we may have very legitimate reasons for seeing the world the way we do. Um, and my final, ta the final task before us, and this is the most important one, is prayer. Um, first of all, it's a lot easier to be empathetic to all of the candidates and their supporters when we pray for them. Um, in 1 Timothy, which we heard a little bit of this morning, the author urges that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and it is acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. There's nobody who is, by, by virtue of their birth or by virtue of their politics, excluded from the kingdom. So pray for the candidates by name. Um, I've been doing it, and it's been helping. Um, it's, it, makes, it makes a difference. It's one of the ways that we recognize that those who have stood for election this year are, like you and me, ultimately dependent on God for their salvation. Um, and more importantly, prayer is the way that we acknowledge that God is a true reality. It allows us to recognize that our salvation does not depend on a presidential candidate or any other human being. In the end, prayer allows us to recognize that God is our king. And acknowledging that God is our king <clears throat> empowers us to entrust our lives and the life of the world not to a human being, but to the God who created and redeemed us. <clears throat> Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom we must account for all our powers and privileges, guide the people of the United States in the election of officials and representatives and of the President of the United States, that by faithful administration and wise laws, the rights of all may be protected and our nation be enabled to fulfill your purposes. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.